So have you ever thought how easy it would be if you could replace all these mappings of controllers with a single line snippet? That's exactly what we are going to discuss in this video today. So let's get started. So hey there, welcome to the Laravel series. So before getting started, if you are new here, please make sure that you press the subscribe button and all the links mentioned in this video will be provided in the description box below. So let's see how to make the code snippet easy. So we have seen in the previous video how to insert user data into the table using the forms. If you have not followed the previous videos, I'll share the link in the description box below and you can also find the link on the screen. As we can see here that we have three different routes for three different functionalities. Let's go through them one by one and see what is the issue in these mappings. So let's see the first mapping that is done by using the URL slash products and they are calling index function inside this controller. With the help of the get HTTP verb, they are calling this resource. So actually this slash products refers to the resource that we are creating in our CRUD application. So this index function is getting all the records from the table and fetching over the web page. Similarly, in the second route, we have the create method and it is calling the create function inside this controller with the same HTTP verb that is get. That means whenever user is writing this URL, it will get the form for the user to insert the data into the table. And similarly for the third one, as you can see, it is using another HTTP verb that is called post and it is calling this URL to call the store method, which is actually storing the user data into the table. So this is the three functionalities and there are several other functionalities apart from these three. So HTTP also provides another verbs like you can check Let's let me make a comment here so that I can explain you and it has several other methods. The first method we have seen is get then we have seen post. We also have another method like put and patch and delete. So these are some HTTP verbs that is actually used when you are passing the data over the HTTP servers. So basically for all these operations you have to create separate URLs for them. This makes the process very difficult for the programmers as we need to write all the mappings for all the operations. So there comes the clue that Laravel provides a brand new method to deal with all these mappings for the CRUD operations in a single line of code. So we have resource controllers in Laravel that will take care of all these mappings. So this resource controllers have some common conventions that we need to follow so that our mapping is done right and all the operations are performed successfully. So let's go to the conventions. And the first one is if I use the get method and I call something like slash products, then it will call an index method and it will display all the data that is there in the products table. So it will fetch all the records. Secondly, if I write the get verb and I write the URL like slash products slash create, then it will call the method called create and it will display the form. Let me write it here. It will display the form uh, to enter the table or you can say to enter the data into the table from the user. Secondly, and we have also one method called get slash products slash one. If I'm writing the query like this, then it will call the show method and it will display a particular product according to the ID which user is giving there. So that means 
If I'm writing slash products slash one, that means this one is called the ID, which the user will be clicking on or providing in the URL. So this will be taken as a parameter inside this URL and it will call show function inside the controller and will display a particular product with that ID. The next is if I write post HTTP verb and I write slash products, as you can see, this is similar to the first one, but the difference is in the first method, we were using get HTTP verb. And in this, we are using the method as post. So it will call the store method and which will actually store the data inside your table. So that is how these conventions work. And the next convention we will look at is now suppose if I need to edit my data, uh, my data inside the table. So I need to use the edit method. And for edit, we have either put or patch methods. There is a slight difference in put and patch methods. Uh, one is basically used to uh, only update the specific fields and the other one is used to actually replace that content or that resource with another resource. So we will be dealing with the patch method only for this tutorials. As there's a slight difference, I'll not go into the depth. So let me keep it simple and we will be using the patch method. So with this patch method, suppose if I want to edit some resource, so I'll be writing the path as slash products and then I'll write slash one and then uh, this will actually call the update method which will contain the code to update the record. So it's very clear that we need to update the records with that particular detail like ID, name, so suppose I want to update the product called laptop and uh, it will the ID for the laptops is assigned as suppose 101. So it will only update the laptops field with ID 101. So it's very important to give the ID. Otherwise, you know, it will update all the records. So whenever you are updating anything, you must see that there is a form provided to the user. So to open that form, we also have one resource or you can say we have one URL which is already specified. So what is the path for that is you will use the get method. Oops, my mistake. We'll use get method and the path will be something like slash products slash one slash edit. So basically this will call an edit method and it will open the form to update the data so actually it will take the data from the user by opening the form and that form will be opened using this path and when we are using this get http verb and after when user clicks on submit it will call this patch method with this url and the update method will be called which will update the details in the table and the last method which we are left with is delete. So if I write delete method, then the URL used is slash products slash one. This one is again the ID. Wherever I'm writing the one, it represents the ID because you never want to delete the complete records or you never want to update the whole lot of data present in your table. So we will be updating and deleting only the specific records and for that we need to provide the id in the url or you can say as a route parameters so this is how this delete function will take place and it will call a specific function called destroy oops my mistake so it will call a function called destroy which will contain the code to delete all the data now that i have told you about the conventions it's time that we create a resource controller and we make a route for that controller. And let's check how these methods are being called there. To create resource controller, I will go to my CMD and open the project. And then we will write a command called phpartisan make. Then I'll write the controller. And then the controller name. Say the controller name is product controller but we have already created the controller with this name so i will write it as 
say products controller and then after that we will write one command known as hyphen hyphen resource you can either write resource or you can write hyphen r so both both will work and will create a resource controller so let me write it in verbose mode that is resource and if i click enter it should create a new controller called products controller which will act as resource controller so let's check if that controller has been created. So here is my controller Laravel controller that is product. Uh, let's check it inside the controller's product. And there is a controller named as products controller. If I open this controller, you can see there are some functions written already inside this code. That means we are provided with all the functions that we require for CRUD operations. Let's see there is a function called index this index function and the comment is also written and it's displaying what this function is performing. So it is also writing display a listing of resource and then we have create it, it shows the form for creating a new resource and then we have store method which will actually store a new created resource that we have discussed in the last section and we have the show method as well which will display the specified resource and the id is also provided so you can see how easy it is now to call these functions and just to route only single controller i'll show you that in a few minutes so after this uh, we have edit method that will actually show the form for editing purpose and then update method which will update the specified resource that is you are giving the ID to update specific resource and the last function that is destroy which will actually remove the specified resource. So you can also check there is something written as request and update. That means this request object is nothing but it will fetch the request given by the user. That means when I'm entering the ID, name, email ID, whatever is there in the forms, it will fetch those values from the form using this request method. So we will see it later in the later videos. So let's see if how to let it route in without using these three routes how to route the resource controller with a single liner code. So if I write here route, then we will write one method known as resource. Instead of get or post methods, we will be defining resource and then the resource name. The resource name using I am uh, using here is products. As you can see in all the URLs, I have written slash products. So I will be writing here slash products. And then I'll write the controller name. The controller name is products controller. And we do not need to write any function name after it. Like we used to do, we used to write at the rate here and then the function name, but you don't need to write that now. So that means all the methods will be called using this single mapping code. So how we can call those methods, let's just have a look on that and then we can wind up this video. So if I want to call the index method, and I have told you that it is called when I'm writing slash products in my browser. So let's see that. Switch on the Laravel server, that is php artisan serve. And yes, the server has been started. And now I'll write that same route here. And the URL which I need to write is slash products. If I press enter, I get a blank screen. So that means it is calling something there. And we have already discussed that slash products, when I'm writing it using get method, it will call the index method. As you can check inside it, if I write something inside this index method, let's say hello, oops, then we'll write index. That's it. And let's see if I call this method again, just refresh this. So I'm getting the value as hello index. That means we can call any method using these conventions. I understand that this is totally new to you guys and you might feel like 
difficult in cramming these URLs but trust me you will get this into your head as soon as you practice and also you can do one thing that you can make the notes of it in the sticky notes and you can keep it on your desktop always to remember these URLs. So we will follow these conventions and at the last now I'll show you one tip how you can make your database operations easy with this resource controller. So we have to see one more command command that is php artisan make controller i will create a resource controller but i will embed my model into this controller now so the controller name is suppose prod controller because i have already the controller with the name product controller so i will just take a dummy name and then i will write resource and after that, I will write an option that is hyphen M to embed the model. So to embed model inside it, I'll write my model name, which is already there. So I have already created this model product. Even if you have not created it, it will ask you for the creation of that model when you click enter. So there is no problem for that. If I press enter now, it was created my controller successfully. Let's check this out. And I have the controller in my controllers folder. Inside it, you can check that yes, my model that is product has been automatically used inside this file. And you can also check this show method, which is actually creating or passing this object of my model inside this method. So I can simply write it like this and I can use this product anywhere or everywhere I want to use the database. So this is very useful to you guys to make the product that is resource and the model combination together so that the CRUD operations becomes easy. So let me know guys what you think about resource controllers and if you think it's useful and it's easy to implement in projects, put a thumbs up in the comment section below. So that's it for this video and if you like the content, please like, share and subscribe and put your comments in the comment section below. We'll see you in the next video.